Hey, a pleasant good day, everybody. This is the latest edition of the Ghostly Take as we're here to recap the Phantom season. They did go out with a bang, winning a game 3-0 to to end the season in a very large crowd there, so that was nice to see. I'm joined by the great reporter for Flyers Nitty Gritty of the Lehigh Valley Phantom, Samantha Wismer. And how are you doing, Sam? How are you doing today? It's a good day when the Phantoms at least go out with a bang with that type of yeah. window. The it, was, uh, it was definitely uh there was a lot of energy there last night and uh sandy played lights out completely dialed in last night and it was it was great to see yeah it, yeah it was nice to see um the phantoms also with the more healthy roster we had uh cooper zek come back in maxime shushko came back in garrett wilson basically said i am damn sure playing the final game of the season um and then linus herdberg came back and zamula came back and all of that definitely, you do still have Karinchik playing forward. So, but, but, so you had a kind of smorgasbord lineup still, but it definitely was a more straightforward lineup mixed in with the fact that you still had a defenseman playing forward. So I think all of that kind of was a perfect ending to this roller coaster season because you got to have a great final finish and everybody kind of just came back at the perfect time and the timing worked out well that the Flyers ended the day before so you could get the guys back for the final game. So I think even in this roller coaster that wasn't a good season for the Phantoms, it was nice to see the end kind of just come to this cool everything kind of just worked out ending. Definitely. And um you know they they didn't start the year off hot. Um they were definitely making a push for playoffs. Unfortunately, they lost contention um, to, to, to make Calder Cup playoffs. But, um, you know, they haven't had the greatest of years, but there was effort in every single game that they played. And, you know, mistakes were made on players' parts and coaches' parts, too. Um, you know, I can't, I can't, you know, you know, not, not tell. Like, mistakes were made this year. Um, but it also wasn't the easiest year with injuries and call-ups and COVID yeah. and just it, at times the fans were playing with a depleted roster and that happens. But, you know, um, I think we can all learn from this this year and, and move forward for, for next season. Yeah. I do think the Phantoms too, which is something it seemed like Lappy staff did a little bit better than because Gordon's more of a he's a good head coach but he's more of a if you're ready to push for the Calder head coach in the AHL for me where I feel like Lappy staff you picked up from Providence a young defenseman in Zek and then later in the season um Fletcher and Flair who I think works more with the minor league team they were able to find uh Manel who was very good for Iowa kind of was an odd man out of Toronto because their defense has a lot of B to C plus level guys um that he was able to come in here and actually play well to round out the season. Those are the pickups to me. I didn't see enough. The like not widely talked about because they're not popping prospects, but guys that do well for the AHL that maybe can eventually become something higher. Those are the pickups I didn't necessarily see enough in the last four years that I liked this year. The fact that you're also focusing on defense, which obviously is the most important thing to build around your goaltender first and foremost out. Yet you want to, and Lappy talks about kind of that North style and a North style usually in my head is play great defense first. So then you can go the hell North and get, get chances in the offensive zone. So adding in young defensemen that can help with that, I think is only going to help you. So I like how they did that and kind of stole that book a little bit from how Kirk McDonald always adds guys that are for this year, but more so also for the future. So, like, they're not necessarily a cog that you're going, oh, well, he just because he didn't do fantastic, but he did fine this year, we're not going to keep him. It's more, no, we have to keep him because he did fine this year and he's only 22 or he's only, I think, Manel's 24. So, like, you have guys like that that can develop and I think those are smart moves that something that I think they deserve to be pointed out in the positive for the team's pickups this year because those are guys that can really help you in the future going forward especially when the Hogbergs and Zamulas are in the NHL yeah um I do know um one of my Twitter followers contacted me this morning and said that uh, Danny Breer was actually sitting like I guess in the seats last night paying very close attention to the team so I mean, Danny is, is definitely getting involved in, in the Phantoms. So let's see what changes he decides to bring because, I mean, there's got to be changes from ground floor up. You know, I, I don't think we have to touch the Royals so much, but uh, obviously 
Playoffs. He's already been there, too, and he said he's going to be present there. Danny seems to be a guy, because he started in the ECHL, that wants to be very involved in the whole three-prong process, meaning from double A to the uh, NHL. And I think that's a good thing to have. And you need somebody that's in, you know, the GM realm of things who has been a GM for the Maine Mariners. You, you need somebody like that to kind of watch the minor league and they, he knows what he's looking for from minor league players. You know, um, there was a quote by Lappy earlier this week that was like, look, flyers are watching. Phantoms are watching. My boss is watching. Everybody's watching these guys and giving up on your teammates is just completely unacceptable. Yeah. And I think also a guy um, like having all the guys back yesterday, I was also happy to see a uh, Shushko get a game in at by the end. So like, he's somebody like, Th- that I think the stat sheet wasn't kind to this year, but when you watch the team, like he did give always a high max effort in the defensive zone. A minus five, I think, is more graded to the fact that the Phantoms kind of always had net front miscommunication than it is to Maxine Shushko's defense. Like, I-, I think he honestly has a chance to still crack the next level more because of the fact that he's great defensively, where if you're just great defensively and you have that skating speed, Eventually, you're probably going to, I don't know, become like a, at least like a Vinny Hina Stroza potential level, but much better at defense. The senior Stroza is not the best defensively. So, like, you're going to have those elements of his skating speed and then also be a much better defensive player. So, like, I think the Flyers have these, and I kind of been saying it all season with the Phantoms, these good fill out your roster prospects. We just don't have that Slavkowski, the Logan Cooley, the whatever. And that's why you want the, them to draft that. In this in this year's draft, they don't have that next franchise Giroux. We have a next goal scorer, maybe in Forster and Wisdom, and but we don't have the franchise. Uh, I think um, Charlie O'Connor had said this morning that if the Kraken win or at least go into overtime, the Flyers get third draft pick. But if the Kraken lose, we move into. It will be the third odds because we have the lottery now. So it will be the yeah, third best odds. Bad. Yeah, and then the fourth best odds if we do, which the percentages aren't the biggest difference. So, like, you get a little bit better percentage for third than you do for. But um, it definitely would be helpful still to move into. I don't third. know. Half of half my Twitter followers are uh, hashtag tank for Bedard fans. So. Oh, yeah. Well, that would be for next. <laughs> so you got you to gotta make sure you're also – in this spot next season and get the first overall pictures, I don't think. Unless it meets off number one. I honestly don't think Flyers fans can handle another season <laughs> like this. Um, I, I could if we get Connor Bedard or Madve Michkov, because both of them look great. So, but, but if you get two, you're, pay, you're not getting Connor Bedard. That's the thing. I think Connor Bedard is definitely going one, unless if Bedard and Michkov – kind of balance out and people think Mishkov's the more kind of freakishly talented guy. Kind of like in this year you have Shane Wright, who's great, but there's more freakishly like silky Mitch talented guys in the draft than Shane Wright, but Shane Wright's a fantastic like Taze uh, floor to Bergeron ceiling player. So like it's a different style, but um, I, I, yeah, I definitely agree with that. It's going to be interesting to see what the Flyers do moving forward. But when it comes to the Phantom First, uh, we could get into, we mentioned this guy, Felix Sandstrom. Uh, He finished the season after yesterday's fine performance with a 9.02 and a 2.89. He was 16, 18, and 5. Don't look at that record, though. That's a team team stat. That's nothing on Sandy. I thought there was a lot of games, similar to when he went up with the Flyers, that the Phantoms could have lost by a bigger goal total if Felix Sandstrom wasn't sharp in them when it was like say a four to two loss or a like with the empty netter making it five a five to three loss or something like that i feel like th- there's a lot of games you could point to and even some against great teams like Utica or whatever that that, that sandy at least for part of the game kept you in the game and to me that's uh, I'll, I'll turn it over to you but that's kind of the makings of a goalie that could be successful and already has been successful at the next level in a couple games and definitely has been very successful at the ahl level yeah, you know, um, I kind of got emotional last night when, when he got the shutout. I think it was like his second shutout of the season or, or something like that. Um, 
watching him progress from the ECHL up to the AHL and, and watching him play the few games that he has for the Flyers, it's, it's kind of, you know, full circle because his development has just skyrocketed in the last like year and a half. And, you know, I couldn't be happier for him. Um, you know, I could see him possibly being Carter Hart's backup next year. Um, he is more than capable of handling a 25 to 30, 30 game ca- case caseload. Um, so, but you know, he's a great goaltender. He, he has the ability and if they don't resign him and sign a veteran and I have to see him in, in the AHL for another season, I'm going to be highly disappointed with the Flyers. I could possibly see him going back to Sweden and playing, um, if they sign another veteran or if they resign Martin Jones, which that's a different podcast. Um, but yeah, I mean, Sandy, Sandy has done great things and, you know, the, the team, I didn't watch too many of the Flyers press conferences, but, you know, being impressed for the Phantoms, um, the boys definitely owned up when they let their goaltenders out to dry. Yeah. And, and also a perfect example, which we'll get to this in the Flyers pocket, but, but against Buffalo, his stats didn't look great at the end of that game, but that's also because the Flyers let Buffalo play them like they were the Tampa Bay Lightning. And their offensive chances were fantastic. So, like, he did very much so keep them in that um, game. So, I think there's a lot of positives there. I think a positive heading in the next season for the Phantoms, since I think, like, you hit it on the head. I would also, if I was the Flyers, I'm having Sands should be Carter Hart's backup. Therefore, he's not my goaltender option with the Lehigh Valley Phantoms. So, if I'm the Phantoms, the veteran I would be resigning is the guy we go next into who is one of the best in the ECHL of all time, who is going to get to help the Royals now with their playoff run that the Phantom season is over. Uh, and that would be uh, Pat Nagel, who had a 274-904 and got to make the Olympic team. Never thought he would be doing that to start this season. Um, and has just been very good for the Lehigh Valley Phantoms as a veteran goalie. I think we let Zane go last year, and I know you've talked about that as well. You can't let Pat go this year. you got to keep a veteran in there with these young guys, especially – if I think they're going to give either an A, because I think personally they're going to give an AHL or ECHL deal to Usti because he has a core injury. And when you have a core injury, it takes a while to battle back. So I feel like either he'll start with the Royals on a Phantoms contract or he'll just get an ECHL deal. So that adds another young goal. Samuel's coming off of an injury. And, you you know, need to have a veteran with those youngsters. Yeah, and going and going back to last year and the whole veteran thing, I think the, the biggest mistake they made – and if you know me, you know me. I love Alex Lyon. I will never talk bad about him. But the, the biggest thing that the mistake they made was not making him back up. You sign Martin Jones, you get rid of Alex Lyon. Now look at Alex Lyon. He just won an award for like some type of goaltending award for the AHL. Um, he is more than capable of playing backup in the NHL. And you're letting someone of that veteran status you, you you let that veteran status go. Veteran's away, yeah. You have you let Zane McIntyre go. Why? He's a brick house in net. Like I loved Zane when he was here. Um Hap pretty- Holmes Award, by the way, is Lion. I just looked it up. Wolves Lion wins Hap Holmes Award is yes. the one that for the goaltender. Yeah, I just saw that before I logged on. Um and now you have Pat Nagel and if you don't have somebody of that veteran status because let's face it, I did a gold hunting article like a week and a half, two weeks ago at this point. Um, if Arison and Usamenko do not get healthy, we are screwed. Yeah, you need to have somebody else. Exactly. You are absolutely screwed. Arison has been in and out all been in and out of the lineup all season. And he gets banged up and he doesn't ever finish a game. He needs to get healthy over the summer. Ustaminko needs to get healthy over the summer. Yeah, because that's a core hip thing. That's your core, too. So you yeah, and, that. you know, they both need to get healthy or we're screwed. Because if we're going to bring Fedotov over, we need to find a way, first of all, to get him out of Russia. And then we need to sign him if he even wants to come over here. So there's there's a whole lot of question marks going on with goaltending in this organization right now. Yeah. 
And that's why I'm surprised, honestly, minus the fact that the Phantoms, of course, picked up Darian Hansen, who I like as a goalie, but the Flyers did not pick up one of the more, like the Fontys of the world that Edmonton picked up, or the obviously McKeg. Uh, like, you have different guys in the undrafted pool that I wouldn't have been shocked that the Flyers, if they did pick somebody up, because it adds the kind of overager college prospect that has a lot of the experience in college that are the guys that sometimes come right in and definitely make an AHL impact usually, but sometimes even make an NHL impact fairly quickly because they just are the 24, 25 year olds that really got all the experience. But by the way, the award that went to Lyon is also presented to the goaltender, which allows the fewest goals per game in the regular season. So uh, that award uh, obviously was well deserved to Lyon, and that just proves uh, how good of a um, of a uh, goaltender he is. And then the Wolves teammates capture the AHL scoring title. So I guess the Chicago Wolves just want to steal every single award in the AHL. Uh, as Stefan Nosen and Andrew Poltorowski, who Poltorowski was also cool to get to see him debut this year, the captain of the Wolves, who was a career AHL or. Uh, he actually got to play a couple NHL games this year. It's always nice to follow those stories as well. And with with Polterowski, um, he actually got his 100th point and ha- is the 100th player to do so in the AHL. Oh, nice! 100, 100. That's a that's a good mind. You're always going to remember that one. That's a cool. You should, he should get that framed, like in a. <laughs> that would be a cool thing to remember. <laughs> but uh, as we move on from goaltending. Before we move into our forwards, I think something that's going to take us a little bit of a minute to go through with the Phantoms, because about 17,000 of them played with all of our injuries and the amount of people that went up, is the defenseman. (laughs) So uh, when it comes to our defensemen, uh, I I think I well, one, I really liked how a lot of our young guys played. Logan Day, I thought, had another good season. He's just one of those other – he's like a right-handed version of Hogberg that just is a keep it simple – defenseman that slows down the game well but Hogberg obviously is the more higher potential version but like the, the, you know what I'm trying to say there I think Wiley good Zamula for you who's the guy that in the positive we'll start with um stood out the most on the defense and then is there somebody that didn't stand out enough that you would be okay with if they either kept him or just let that person uh go to a different team hmm um, Wiley had a great year. He had a solid yep. year. He worked through two injuries. Um, they weren't long term. He was, you know, back within a short amount of time. Um, solid year. He got a lot better. Um, so, you know, I, I would like to see him crack the roster. I mean, he almost cracked the roster this year. Um, for some reason, he didn't. And, I said he needed a full year in the AHL. There was no doubt about that. Um, someone who really didn't stand out that much. Uh, not that he didn't stand out, because he did. Uh, Logan Day, he just um, he keeps getting better. And I, I like to see, like I said, I love covering this level because of watching them develop. Um, a defenseman, I think, is ready. Zamola. Watching, mm-hmm. watching him Friday night at the Flyers game, I was just like, take him. I don't want to see him in a Phantoms uniform anymore. Like, But again, who am I? <laughs> no, I, I think that's the case. And that's why I really like the difference of, I think Gordo wasn't necessarily the perfect coach for where the Flyers are trying to go now with at least a retool. Let's just call a spade a spade. If they don't want to call it a reboot, it's at least a retool. Uh, so... You have a coach that more talks the talk there where Lappy even said in the one thing, if I ever have to be that guy that's always just going to be kind of a hard nose, like, I forget the exact thing he said, but like a hard nosed coach, that I, that's not me. I would quit. And I'm serious. I would just quit if that's the case because I like trying to motivate the guys in my own way and preaching what, what works best for them. I'm not just going to be a hard nosed dude at everybody because that doesn't always work. And the thing with Lappy is, you know, I remember Mike Yo being very angry with the team after one game saying, you know, I'm going to sit these guys, I'm going to bring guys up, blah, 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 you know, talking out of anger. That's but true. If you're going to say something in a press conference, kind of follow through with it because Lappy said it. And guess what? Lappy sat some guys. 
Yeah. It's like, you're going to learn from this mistake. So, you know, seeing him grow as a coach this year from beginning to end, he made, he made an, an improvement from beginning to end. Oh, I agree on that. And that's also why I don't think, and we'll get to this in the Flyers video, but I don't think there's any change of yo coming back. Because when you have a guy that's in his first year as a head coach in the AHL that's doing exactly what you just said and talking the talk and walking the walk, and then you just talk the talk and don't actually walk the walk to back up your talk, that's not that, that that's not a good look. And uh, I completely agree with that. I think um, on top of Zamula... Um, being completely ready for the NHL. Obviously, another guy we're not going to see in a Phantoms uniform most likely ever again, assuming he doesn't come down for rehab at the start of the year, is Cam York. Because Cam York looked very good in the NHL and looks like he's perfectly ready. So those two lefties of Zamula and York, I would say, are definitely going to be at oh, the yeah. NHL level. The first and then Hogberg might even make it as the seventh D man, just because I right now we don't have a better like, and I'm not saying that because I think he's I think Hogberg's a good defense, but I'm just saying if I'm taking Nick's I'm not taking Nick Sealer if we keep him over Linus Hogberg, I would be putting Nick Sealer in the AHL as an AHL veteran and taking Hogberg to mix in because then you have a defenseman that sometimes you might want to mix him into the lineup against a team instead of having, I don't know, say you have Risto in and Risto has had a bad week. You might want to mix in a guy that just simplifies the game like Hogberg into your defense for a game. So having him as an extra defenseman also adds a different dimension where having Sealer with the guys we already have kind of adds more similarity. So Yeah, and, and Cam York only has a hairline fracture, so he should be good to go by, by June workout. Yeah, no, I agree, and that's what's always good to see with that. And Mason Millman showed great signs with the. He's a guy that I'm excited to see with the Phantom next year because he looked good last year in his small sample size and moments. I think they kept him down with Redding to have stability this year, and he's been one of their best defensemen, if not their best. Um, and then that's only at the age of 20. So I think next year in the AHL, he might end up taking that huge next a step where I think the Flyers, since he was a mid-round pick, are trying to just take the patience as a virtue approach with Mason Millman and I have no problem with that because you have other D men right now that are fine that are ahead of him where Millie is probably going to end up being the best version of himself by having that patient approach so I I, I actually agree that that's something I don't always agree with our development uh ways obviously but that is something that I've actually agreed with that track at least but my only guy, I think somebody, and you've kind of hinted, I think somebody, especially if we're going to keep Sealer and he's going to be an AHL veteran going into next year because I don't think he's going to make the Flyers roster. That was kind of just by default this year, and he played well enough, to, but like that, that is what it is. Glenn Denning, I think, is a guy that they could just let go to a different team. He's a more of a contending AHL defenseman. Like If you're on a contending team, you have him put up 42 points for you and have that good offensive style because he's a lot. He's not the best in the defensive zone. Obviously. He's not good in the defensive zone. He's like, he literally is what, like the like you kind of even said it, the Yandel of the AHL. But um, a couple, but he still is more where Yandel was when he was able to kind of counterbalance his offense for his defense. Still, yeah. Where uh, that works better for like even like a team like the Thunderbirds or so that we recently played, like a team that's contending that you want to mix that more into your lineup. Not a team that's still building up guys. You could have a Nick Sealer in your lineup that's a veteran that is more of a defensive guy then because that's going to help guys get better at defense where Glenn Danning can't necessarily do that. And the thing with Glenn Danning is that he's a career journeyman so far. I think this is like his eighth team in nine years. So he never really got the chance to be on a team with a coach that like, you know, it, it was just never, I just feel like he hasn't had a stable career. Um, you know, and I have people in my section who just groaned every time Von Dunning would go on the ice for a shootout or something like that. And I'm like, maybe Lappy sees something in him that we're not seeing. But like, again, you know, I, I would love to keep the same team year after year because it gets very confusing, but it also gives me content to push out. Um, every year that we, we sign different guys. Um, I don't think Cal O'Reilly is going to come back. It would be his fourth year. If he does, great. He's a great captain. Um, I really, really hope we sign Garrett Wilson, re, well, re-sign Garrett Wilson yeah. uh, for the third season. He 
is well loved in the Lehigh Valley, um, you know, and he he provides that leadership aspect as well. Yeah, I hope we resign Garrett. Obviously, he worked his tail off to get back for the final game, and that shows just the leader he is. I I hope we do keep Cal around, but I could see him trying to, if he's continuing his career, go to a better contender at this point that's in a more colder contending uh, spot. But at the same time, he seems to really love playing for this team, so I could also see him. That, that's like a 50-50 in my mind. Like, if he goes somewhere, I'm not going to blame him because he's at the end of his career going to a contender. And then if he stays here, I'm going to be very happy because he talks about how much he loves the team and he's a great leader. Um, if he doesn't stay, though, I would give the captaincy to Garrett if we do keep him. Because Garrett was a former captain with Wilkesbury for about five seconds, and then he got called up to the Pittsburgh Penguins that season. So uh, he, he definitely has the leadership qualities. Garrett would definitely be a great captain. He, um, you know, he stepped out on the ice a lot this year when penalties would happen, and he would be the one talking to um, the refs um, if he wasn't the one in the penalty box. <laughs> yeah, if he wasn't the one in the penalty box, exactly. Uh, Obvious- there was, there was okay. a penalty. There was a penalty early in the game last night, and they, you know, said Garrett Wilson two minutes for holding. I was like, oh, Garrett in the penalty box. What a shock. <laughs> Yeah, I think uh, he had a killer season. I did love um, the fact that, obviously, in his one game he played, and we're going to get to see what he really could be next year on defense. I'm excited to see what these young guys can be, and Karinczyk played solid in eight games and then was able to play forward for us. You have to give him a shout-out for that to be able to sub in as a forward in one game as well, just like uh, McKinnon was able to do in a couple games for us. But him, Felix fought somebody in the first game, Talked about how you can't fight in college. It was nice to be able to fight in the AHL and pounded that dude. So <laughs> that was nice to see. Yeah. Uh, Will Riddell, former captain himself. So, you know, he brings in great leadership in a locker room. So I think they're starting to really build this, which Lappy, I think that's one of his strengths because with the Flyers as an assistant, he was one of those guys that really helped the locker room and was good with the young guys, but good at kind of helping everybody stay in the right headspace. I think having all these young defensemen come in is going to be very good for him as a coach next season, too, because he's just going to continue to have all these guys kind of grow at the same time. And they're also doing it right because we talked about how Zamula Hogberg might not even be on the team to start next season. Wiley could not be on the team to start next season because they could make the NHL roster. Um, So you're going to have to have the Riddells, the Karinczaks, even Garrett McFadden, who uh, came up from Reading, potentially – and other young Colin Felix and Mason Millman, you're going to have to have those guys and Zach and Manel potentially take bigger roles because you're just not going to have the other guys there anymore because that's the way the AHL works. You have everybody get rewarded for their play and move up, and then you have these other guys that you have to have ready um, in the basically in park that are ready to jump in and just start driving and going great. So I think they're starting to set themselves up for success in that way. That's why. That combined with now that we get into the forwards, we have defense, we have guys coming that aren't even on the team yet that are overseas or that are going to be signed in to their ELCs potentially as well. So those factors as well, um, even though this was a down season, definitely make me feel more positive about next season because I really like the pickups the, the Phantoms made and I really like the way that they have guys – like Forster, like Zim, like not some more, like Wiley, even if he stays down, but you have Forster, you've got wisdom. Those guys coming in, two of potentially some of the better youngsters in the league, and then you're going to have both of them coming back next season. So I think the Phantoms roster is going to look a lot more lethal in terms of skill to start next yeah. season instead of just round and pound. Um, they're going to have a little bit more skill too. Especially with – um. Tyson and, and Zade coming back. Um, oh, and Tamala. We forgot about Tamala. I forgot about Tamala. Yeah. Um, I know I know a couple of my friends um, definitely were, are fans of Tuamala. And, you know, I, I got questioned about, like, maybe a week after he left. And my friend was like, yo, where, where's that, that, that kid in this number uniform? I was like, dude, he was, he was sent back to Sweden. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think he. Wherever he is. He went back to Sweden also um, because I talked to Jamie about this where it was that it was more of one of those. He's from his homeland. He went back to play in his home league where he actually got drafted in the juniors. So he could have played in the 
juniors, but he felt like he didn't want to go to a new setting in a still uncertain time of the world, I think, which makes sense. So he went back to something that was familiar to him where um, I'm fine with that because obviously the leagues overseas, as we see the domino effect of hockey uh, continuing to grow and the continuing talent to get, become more vast, they're continuing to get better as well. And I also understand it because I'm kind of somebody that that um, just got out of the whole realm of trying to be go to what makes you less comfortable and trying to experience those things as well. Where I get trying to go to a setting when you're only a what, like 20 year old, 19 year old kid um, that that's familiar to you to play back um, in, in your homeland. So I, I perfectly understand that. But it's going to be interesting because he didn't play that many games this year, uh, how he comes back. Uh, next year uh, over here if he does decide to come over here if he plays in the in a junior league since I don't know where his birth date is at 19 years of age or if he decides to play one more year overseas and gets more playing time he's definitely going to be one of the more interesting guys to follow it does seem like he has the skill though he kind of reminds you when you watch him of an Atkinson or style player it's just and I know one of his comps was Atkinson so, yeah. like, that definitely uh, um, kind of reminds you of that. He is a literal child. Uh, January 8th, 2003. So, he's 19. He's going to be 20 yeah. in January. Yeah. So, he has a lot of room to grow. And I think having him back into the fold with Forster, who, if he gets going good in the first couple of months, I'm not sure how long he'll even be in the AHL. But that's something that's a different conversation for a different time. Uh, and then Wisdom who's coming back from the uh, juniors that's still a very young kid as well that is going to continue to grow and already had a great season at 18. So uh, we know that he has a lot of stuff in his skates and potentially is a steal. Elliot Desnoyers eventually is going to come into the fold after kicking behind in his junior league. So you have, with the jam players you have, like say if Ratcliffe stays down, but even if he doesn't, you have Hayden Hodgson who, might start the season again next year with the Phantoms. If he doesn't make the roster, you have Garrett Wilson. You already have those muscle jam players. Now you're adding in that more bigger end skill with all these guys we mentioned, plus guys developing further that following season into bigger versions of the players they were starting to become wrapping up this season. That's what that's what makes me feel more positive for next season because I think they're building it the right way. It's just this was kind of just a kind of like a shitstorm of a bunch of stuff this well, yeah. year where that's that and you gotta you gotta think about the players that you're not gonna that you know you definitely are not going to have next season and and two of those players are Tanner Lazinski and and Wade Owls. Yeah, yeah, because Tanner has to be, I would think, three C to start next season, which is also why if we keep Morgan with the Flyers, I don't think he's gonna play center anyway. So that's why I was ranting about him moving to center or moving to wing for a while, and then I realized I was an idiot because I realized with the roster structure, he's probably going to by default do that anyway. So I should just shut up and realize that might happen by default. Uh, but the when it comes to them, I completely agree with Tanner and Wade. The only thing that holds them back was Lappy's kind of – well, not with Tanner, but he said this about Sandine and Allison is those guys' motors don't quit. That sometimes as, as much as it helps them, it hurts them where then they're injure themselves because of the spots they put themselves in because they have those never quitting motors that sometimes you do have to pull back a little bit just to be better for your overall career. And I know Lappy in the one interview kind of paraphrasing mentioned that when I was listening on AHL TV um, about Allison and Linus Sandine, where both have the ability to be very good players. It's just, you have to know when to kind of click it back a tick. So you're not, almost setting yourself up for injury. Exactly. And I think that that's what hurt Wade a little bit this season was just he he has the energy. He just um, he needs to use that energy in the right way or the injuries are going to keep happening. Yeah. And that's the same way, I think, because Sandin's a very smart player and isn't obviously the largest guy, but will get to the dirty areas sometimes the way he plays in front of the net, he'll get a little bit too reckless of abandon and that'll set himself up for getting hit, hit too much by stuff that's going to knock you out of the lineup for a while, getting hit in the f- So, like, it's just about learning those things because I do still think if he doesn't decide to go back to Sweden and overseas, I do think uh, Sandin has a shot because of how intelligent of a player he is. It's more 
is he going to stay healthy enough to be able to continue to have that shot? Because eventually, as Le Perrier was also, uh, which I like how blunt he is, that's what I love about Kirk McDonald, eventually guys are going to come and pass you by. Because we already mentioned a few talented guys that are coming up as youngsters and you're going to draft more. So eventually, if you just can't stay on the ice enough, guys are going to come by to, that kind of just end up passing you by. And that's just an unfortunate reality of the game. And then he might go elsewhere and find success because he could stay healthier. But hopefully it does happen here. But I think we did have a pretty good overall um, talk on a lot of our guys um, this season. One of the things that was a under-the-radar thing I did like to see because I was with you uh, in your seats for this game against uh, – the uh, Bridgeport Islanders, I almost called them the Sound Tigers again, uh, but the Bridgeport Islanders definitely was a better team when they were the Sound Tigers, but that's not here or there. We'll jump into uh, Nick Master um, played one game for us who played at my high school and won us the Flyers Cup. So it was cool to even get him into now he's playing the Royals, oddly enough, full circle in the first round uh, uh, in, in the Cali Cup playoffs. But it was cool to get to see him come in and play that one game with the Phantoms as a local area kid. So that was kind of a cool storyline uh, for you know, me uh, from this season. Not not to not to hit on the Flyers again, but uh, it was funny that they were thinking about, you know, as, as Drew was traded this year and um, they were talking about, like, what they're trading for. They were There were rumors of Owen Tippett. And it was funny because literally probably a week and a half before the trade actually happened, Owen Tippett was playing on the Charlotte Checkers at the PPL Center, and I was able to see him play. I was impressed with the kid. I mean, it definitely is work on his shooting, but um, Owen could definitely be a great player. Yeah, I agree. He needs to work on his finishing because his shot is lethal. It's more JJ said it on the one broadcast. I can't remember what game it was, but like he's been averaging over two points something high percentage chances a game. So eventually, once your finishing gets more on point, that's going to lead to not just teener goals, but lead to the mid-20s and up potential goals there to really make you one of the better goal scorers. Because if you're just generating and getting to the spots of the ice to generate that chance total per game, you're doing something right. So eventually, once like you, you hit it perfectly on the head, once you get the shot down, uh, in terms of hitting the net more consistently, like he did on that power play goal in the final game, you're going to have a lot more success. And he's one of, we'll talk about this in the Flyers video, but he's one of the most exciting guys to watch for the Flyers coming into next season. But uh, we're, we're definitely talking about that in the Flyers video. But to wrap up uh, this one, as we're actually, as my great friend Pirlo Wisdom likes to say, almost at our literal full 42, as this one's almost a 42-minute uh, video, who were your standouts um in the forward core, in the positive, and then if there's anybody there that, like, you could give or take, like, if we keep them, fantastic. If we don't, I'm not going to, like, like be so sad about that. Is there anybody like that as well in the forward core? Standout. Um, I got to go with my boy Tanner. <laughs> um, you know, it comes back from a full, you, you know, two hip two hip injuries that needed surgery and it comes back and just you know does what he does best um i you know i was not critiquing him last night but obviously because he wasn't playing but like i said to my my best friend jason that was with me that he is great on breakaways and that's something that i noticed this year if he gets on a breakaway and he's going for a goal you're more than likely Tanner is going to get it. Oh, yeah. He's also good at making that Richards play in the neutral zone where he can kind of poke the um, poke it off the guy's stick and then accelerate the other way himself because of his defensive instincts where the only other guy that I really saw was Mike Richards on our team that was actually good at, consistently good at stopping somebody in the neutral zone and then just using his momentum, skating momentum to expedite the process the other way. There's not a lot of guys that are that good at doing that. Where um, Tanner definitely strikes me as someone like that. So yeah, he's definitely a good uh, pick. Somebody for me 
that I've always liked and think is probably going to make the Flyers out of the gate next year is I, I did like especially the rounding out to the season from Ratcliffe because I think what I saw when he went to the NHL and came back, the structure of the NHL really made him learn what he has to work on more. And then he started showing all the stuff he worked on in practice, which wasn't a lot this year because of the smudged in games. But when he did have the time and on the side, really started to show on the ice because he would be just able to use, because we know for 6'6 guy, Ratcliffe has more skating speed than most guys that are 6'6, where he learned how to use that more and find ways to just jump in and accelerate, like yesterday, to be in a perfect spot for Hogberg to make that pass for him on the third goal, to be able to jump in front of the defense there. And no one's ever going to catch a guy that size because he's just going to box you out from behind yeah. if he is able to have that skating speed. So I think Ratcliffe's a guy that really impressed me this year because he's not he wasn't just effective in the offensive end but he's got a lot more effective as his career went went on too in the other end as well at shot blocking at getting into lanes there he has to get a little bit better at stand-up defense and by that I mean just like straight up playing straight up stick checking reading the play defense there but shot blocking and all that he's got better at and I think the next thing to come is him just getting with the type of player is very solid in the defensive end to go with yeah, his good instincts in the offensive end. Yeah, and and the the great Bill Meltzer um, even said that he used his size and he used his size consistently this year. Yeah, which is great to see, um, especially from Ratty. And I I really hope that some of these boys make the roster next year because, frankly, I'm tired of seeing them. In the <laughs> yeah, there's certain guys that I think are definitely going to make it. Max, I would say, is probably going to start with the Phantoms just because. He's a guy that I think is going to have to learn what to do at the AHL level that's going to make him more effective at the NHL level, where you have other guys that I think have already figured out more of a way to be effective at the NHL level than Max Willman, if that, if that makes sense. So I think Willman, but I don't have any problem with that because Willman also was in the 34 games he played, one of our more lethal forwards offensively in the AHL, and that's exactly what he is. He's already a lethal forward in the AHL. That came up from the ECHL also. Now he just has to figure it out if he can make yeah. it at the he, NHL level. He just needs to translate that into the NHL level. Um, I agree. But I thank you, uh, Sam, for joining the latest edition of the Ghostly Take. If you had any wrap-up points that you wanted to have or anywhere that you wanted to uh, shout out for sure, any podcast, it doesn't even have to just be uh, Flyers, uh, then you can give those shout-outs right now. Yeah, my, uh, my podcast talking flyers with my co-host uh, john and pat we go live every monday night um and then i also have a uh, carolina hurricanes podcast that also talks about the chicago wolves at the ahl level called super Swan. yeah you're definitely going to be talking about the chicago wolves a lot because you had two different guys like i said capture the scoring title and then alex lyon capture the goalie award so the wolves are stealing the entire ahl's award share yeah. Um, so, uh, you're definitely going to have a lot to talk about there. So definitely go check that out. And the Carolina Hurricanes, even if you're not a fan of them, they're one of the most fun teams to follow in hockey. Oh, and, for sure. Yeah. Um, okay. uh, as an overall fan of the sport, I would recommend checking out their podcast and pretty much watching Hurricanes games because they're one of the more fun teams to watch coached by Rod Brindamore, um, who I had a funny passerby or story with Lance Green with as he was getting nachos or something from PPL Center's concessions and walking back into the under bowl to watch his son Skyler in the uh, regionals. But thank you everybody for joining. Please continue to subscribe to help us grow to the goal of 250 or more by the end of June. Really appreciate you guys love and support this far. It's going to be a fun off season to follow for the Phantoms to see which guys end up signing ELCs to be possibilities for the Phantoms next year. And also just naturally the guys we talked about coming onto the roster next season, plus guys that are going to show good strides in their development. Peace out everybody. Stay safe and enjoy the off season and enjoy the Good summer that hopefully we get some good weather in this area in this summer. Peace out, everybody.